Welcome back to another video. And for this one, I want to do a recap for the Sabres game against the Washington Capitals. For this one, I want to kind of, you know, especially for the channel, I want to shift over to basketball and hockey with that being the kind of the main sports going on as of right now. Depending on how the XFL goes, I will make a few videos about that. I'll still keep, I'll keep you guys in touch with the, you know, trade rumors, acquisitions, cuts, and such like that for the NFL. But for right now, it's pretty slow. And in the next few days, I would probably assume that there might be some surprising cuts, but for the most part, it's going to be for a little bit, it's going to be slow. So I want to start a little bit with hockey. So for this one, again, I want to cover this, the Sabres and Capitals game. And before I kind of get into the game, I want to kind of bring up some context before it. For the Sabres, it's very, you know, very tough news to hear, if you know, if you are a fan, but if you're not. Late, you know, last night into this morning, um, Alex Tuck was placed on IR. Today he was listed as week to week with a lower body injury. It's tough news, especially how great he's been for this team. Especially ever since he's got he's got he's come here from the uh, Jack Eichel trade, he's been amazing for us. Has been awesome, you know, great player. And losing him late into the season, especially, you know, still trying to secure a wild, a wild card spot, it's definitely tough. And then before. Washington game also, Ramses Dalian was considered out. Now I expect him to be good for the next game, or at the very worst, miss one more game. So that's good news that he's not going to be out for long term. Alex Tuck on our hand, it's tough, you know. But going to this game, you're losing your second, third uh, point leaders, both of them being tied with 62 points. I'm also I kind of wrote some of them down, so if I keep looking down, that's the reason why. Just going to this game. You know, for again, just give you the final score. The Sabres had, did win seven to four. It was a huge statement win for them, no doubt. A lot of players stepped up. I'm just gonna quickly read off these uh, point wise for the Sabres on this one. So, no doubt, the biggest one was Dylan Cousins, and he was the number one star, no doubt. He had three goals, his first career hat trick in the NHL, three goals and one assist. Vinny uh, Henestroza had his first goal of the season. He ended up with one goal, one assist. Zemmers Gergensen had one goal. Jeff Skinner had one goal. Tage Thompson, one goal. Casey Mills had two assists. Jack Quinn, two assists. Taysen Jost, one assist. Kyle Posa, one assist. Owen Power, one assist. Uh, Mathis Samuelson, one assist. And uh, Limbiskin, I always have a tough time pronouncing him, one assist as well. So a lot of people stepped up. Big game. Also, too, it's also the jerseys. I, I don't have the right jersey on, but it's the, the 90s throwback. Still have, to, still have to go buy one for that. But no doubt, it was a big one for them. It was a big one, especially Washington being the same spot we are, fighting for a playoff spot. It was it was huge. Uh, UPL had stopped 26 shots, or yeah, 26 of 30 shots. They gave up four goals, of course. And for this one, it's, it, it worries me. Even though we did blow them out, even though we still we scored seven goals, Giving up four goals too is a lot, and you you know you kind of look at the general stats for the team. The Sabers are uh, one of the top teams in scoring, but also one of the worst teams and give up the most point or most goals. So it's definitely a tough situation. It's definitely a very bad spot to be in because you don't know what team you're going to get per game on a night to night basis. There are times where the last three games you get these great you know the great team you know the great Sabers high scoring seven goals in this game. Uh, six games in the Tampa game. Well, there's ones before that. You know, you look at that. They had a few game. You had a few games where they're on a losing streak where they get up, you know, five, six goals to teams. So it's definitely a hot or cold team, and it's, it's especially in the playoffs. You don't, you can't have that. You need a consistent team regardless. And for this one, the next five games are going to be very uh, telling of that if they are worthy of it. But no doubt, just sticking with this game. It was, you know, again, a great, great step up from a lot of teams, no doubt. Our lot of players just say Dylan Cousins, of course, uh, is has shown of late that he is worthy of that contract extension a couple weeks ago, seven years, forty nine million. People had some concerns on that that contract if it was paying too much for him, seven years annually. But so far, he's definitely stepping up. And again, going to the next five games, he's going to be one of the top players that's really going to have to do that. And if he can, it's that contract's going to look like a steal, just like. Tate Thompson's contract. Of course, Tate Thompson is right now is a superstar in the NHL. He is fit. He is fifth in NHL in points, and he is also third in goal scoring. For goal scoring, he's only behind um, Patterson, if I have that right, from 
Boston, and then of course Connor McDavid. But no one, you know, especially for the foreseeable future, no one's going to catch up to Connor McDavid. McDavid's always going to be number one in points and goals. Maybe a few people here and there are going to you know, be him in goals, but for most most part, McDaniel's is the standard for number one. But no doubt, it's been a long time since we even had a, a player like that. So so. For Jeff or Tish Thompson, it's been amazing to have him. And with that, his goal to not, or goal today, he reaches 40 goals of the season. No, I want Jack Quinn, one of the younger players, especially with Paterka. Paterka hasn't done too much as of late. Quinn has really picked it has picked it up to, as you know for the polar opposite has picked it up. Uh, Owen Power too definitely has picked has picked it up being the first overall pick last year. He's great seeing him slowly develop into the player that we expected him to be. And especially with Ramses Dahlin, hopefully it's, it's not long term and he can come back next game. But if he isn't, he's gonna have to step up and take his spot. He he would he also for this game he led the team in most minutes out there. He had over 27 minutes of ice time. So it just it just shows you kind of how well for one that he he's kind of forced in that situation, but also how much that they trust him. So that's you know it's a great t- sign for that. Casey Millstat too. I see a lot of people are frustrated with him. People saying oh, he should get traded i don't know how i feel um it's i don't know it kind of goes up and down for, for me there's games where i do like them and there's other games where i don't i won't be surprised if he gets moved potentially i don't people are saying all oh, for uh patrick kane i don't see this i don't think they're gonna make the move to get patrick kane this deadline who knows i'm not gonna say it's impossible but i just don't see that maybe he could be a, a, a piece that they, they throw in for that for him same with gergensen he's probably gonna be gone after this season but another person I really stopped up to was Skinner. Skinner, as of late, you know, for this season and and last, has really has really shown that he is worth the money, and he's he's a, he is a big part. So again, if you're taking away the top two, or the second or third in points, it is Skinner and Cousins. Skinner has 58. Cousins has 48. Kind of reflects on today's game who were some of the top players in this game, and no doubt they they really show that. You know, I can't. I can't say enough for Cousins. He really stepped up and he really played. He played well. But I want to switch to the next five games because I had not too long, just a minute ago. It's gonna be telling of what this team's gonna be like. So the next five games is Columbus, Boston, Tampa, Edmonton, and the Islanders. Very tough. All four of the five are playoff teams. So no doubt, the next game it's a must win. You have to take that as an easy, easy. I want to say easy team because no team is easy, but them being one of the worst teams in the NHL, you have to st- you have to take that one. You have to get the two points, and after that, you have to fight for every for all of them. So, of course, the most be- most of them they- most points they can get out of the next five is ten. That's unlikely. I I'd-, I'd be shocked if they did that. But for me, I project them to get six out of ten points. Them that means that they would beat Columbus and Edmonton or Columbus and the Islanders, and then getting a point in each of the you know the, the th- other three games: Boston, Tampa, Edmonton. Worst case scenario. I see four points. I see four points. That being again, just Columbus and the Islanders. And best case scenario is seven, where they get a point in every single game. I was like for six. It'd be uh, the only loss I would have is against Tampa. That's only so for the six points. The only loss I, I project them to have is well to not get any points is Tampa and then Boston or Edmonton being overtime or shootout losses. But no doubt, six or seven, it, it, at the very worst, six points has to be the, the, the um, I guess you would say the, I don't know how to say this, the, uh, the standard, there you go, not the, not, the right, not the right word, but it has to be the focus on it. You have to, at the very worst, you have to get six points to stay alive because there's countless teams around you. You have Florida, Detroit, Washington, who you've just faced, Pittsburgh, who's going to be flipping back and forth. Edmonton, who even though even though they have the number one or the first wild card spot, they could potentially get kicked out. But they're still fighting for their they're still fighting for their position. They're only one point behind or one point ahead of us for those for the two for the uh the wild card one and two. So it's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be it is. It's gonna be you know, these next five games are gonna be telling of what this team is made of. This could potentially make or break their playoff run. It's it's a very nerve wracking part of the season. This is the probably the farthest out of the playoff drought, and it's been a long time. We I know we we're like the Bills. We own like the longest playoff drought in the NHL, but.
but this is probably the farthest we've been to the season where we still have a playoff chance. Most of the time, we're usually, you know, halfway through the season, we're already sitting, there's already projected that, yeah, it's, we're not going to, we're not going to make it. We're usually top five worst, and it, you know, they're the bottom five worst teams in the NHL usually, and it's probably, you know, pretty much, you know, said and done that we're not going to make it. So at this point in the season where we have just over 20 games left, you know, give or, t- you know, give or take, and we're, we're in playoff contention and have a wild card spot, it is exciting, but also, again, it's nerve-wracking because you don't know which team you're going to get. If you're going to get the tonight's team where they they just look like a juggernaut offensively, scoring seven goals, six, seven goals, or is it going to be the flip side where you're losing six, seven, you know, losing by or giving up six or seven goals? And no doubt, you know, some telling ones can be Boston, Tampa, Edmonton, and no doubt the biggest one at the end or the, for the fifth game is Islanders, the other wild card spot, and, pretend, and who knows – when we get to that game, how the playoff seating or the playoff standings are going to be, if they're still in the playoffs or they're going to be in the hunts right now, so it's going to be very you know challenging. But if they can do what they did tonight, obviously they'll they'll be good. And some of the players I wrote down that need to step up are the younger players, power for Darlene, but I expect Darlene to be back soon. Perturka, yet you haven't heard of him as of late. That he really had a, a fast start early the season, but really has cooled off since. He's going to have to step up. Quinn, the polar opposite, has really started to play well as of late. He's going to keep continuing that, you know, give two assists, one assist, a goal, something. Cousins, of course, is the, is the main one. If he can if he can keep his dominance, now I'm not expecting him to get three goals a game, but if he can at least get a point or two a game, get us a, you know, a goal or something like that, that's going to be huge. He's going to have to step up. He's going to have to really help Tage Thompson being the second center for this team and playing well, and he has. He is, as of right now, again, if you take away um, talking Darlene and put the you know healthy players in, he's the third, he is third in the team for points. He has 48 points, and he is still in his early 20s. He's, I believe, 21-22. And he's putting up these points, being the second center, and it's just you know as of, you know especially look at these younger players. The Sabers overall have hit have struck home runs on a lot of these guys, You're developing them. And Cousins has really shown that and he is showing more and more people who have doubted him or questioned his contract that he got. He is showing that he is worth his he is worth it, especially with this game, the potential of how great he can play. And he's going to be big for the next five games. And the last one is Krebs. Again. Um, Points wise, doesn't jump out at you, but definitely a, a, a good, a great player, great young player. I don't know if he's gonna be a piece that's good, that might get moved in the in the trade deadline. Again, some people kind of threw his name out for Patrick Kane. Also, I've seen. Again, I don't know, especially with him in middle stat. I'm not sure, but I don't want to say to 100 percent that he is on the team or 100 percent that he's getting traded. He might be a candidate, especially you know that'd be a, no doubt one of the players if we did get a Patrick Kane that Chicago would be interested in. I don't want them, of course, to get rid of any top players, but Krebs could definitely be a candidate for that. But if he isn't, he's for the next five games, he's going to have to contribute. Every, again, everyone is. I ex- for other people, again, it's a standard. Tage Thompson, no doubt, a superstar. I expect you know, greatness from him every game. Jeff Skinner, again, you know, I expect great games from him. If Dylene, who I assume is coming back, he's going to have to really step up def- they're gonna defensively and really lock it down and not have your goalie face 40, 50 shots a night. And you can't do that, especially with Boston, Tampa, Edmonton. With those great players on that team, you can't you can't give those teams 40, 50 shots a night. It's not going to work. It's not going to be a Craig Anderson night where he get he you know 54 shots are, are, are shot at him and he only lets up one. That's, you know, especially for any goalie, that's not going to happen all the time. You, you know, if you do that, you're probably going to be giving up four or five goals potentially. So it's, again, the next four, next five games are going to be really telling on the future for this team. Again, I expect for points why six points is it the very worst that you can do, even though I said worst case scenario is four. I think for the very worst for this team to be safe and to be in a good position to make the playoffs, six points is a must. If they can get more, obviously, it would be, it'd be great. But six points to me is the is the floor that they have to reach. And for the the streak they're on right now, especially with the Washington win, winning seven to four, I think it's a great statement one of the, what this team is capable of. And hopefully they can keep uh, you know pushing forward 
for the, for the next uh, few weeks, or definitely for how long Alex Tucker is going to be out. Someone's going to have to step up and fill that void. I don't know. I hope it is at the very worst. It is two weeks, maybe. I don't. I, I highly doubt he's going to come back in a week. I hope at the very worst it is two weeks. But until then, that's a lot of games. Regardless, a week or two, that's that's a lot of games, a lot of points up for grabs. So no, someone's going to have to step up and take his spot. And I think for one, even though they don't play the same position, but again, Cousins is is going to be a bit is going to be a big one, no doubt. Especially on that second line, he's gonna have to be he's gonna have to step up huge and have these type of games. So again, that's my that's my quick thoughts on the whole situation. It's not you know half of it was about the tonight's game or today's game. The other half is about the future. But I just kind of want to give a quick re, you know quick recap of today's game with their win and then the next kind of like their future for the next few games to see that you know how their season could turn out. If it, you know, could be got to make this is seriously make or break because you have so many teams around you. So again, I just want to make a quick game or a quick uh, video about this. Let me know your thoughts on the Washington win and also what you expect from the Sabres in the next few games. What's going to happen with them if they're going to make the playoffs or not? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed. Leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.